Welcome, and thanks for tuning in. I'm Cameron Delano, Strategic Architect with F5, and this is the next installment in our series of videos that explore the various hybrid architectures that can be deployed using the F5 product portfolio. We'll be showing how to use the accompanying GitHub repo and CI-CD platform as stepping stones to deploying these solutions in your own environment. In this video, we'll be showcasing the F5 Distributed Cloud Web App and API Protection Service, as well as the Nginx Ingress Controller. So what do I mean by hybrid deployments? Well, these are deployments that utilize multiple F5 products in a complementary pattern to provide a layered defense in depth security strategy. In this example, we'll be deploying Edge Web App and API Protection using F5's Distributed Cloud Services and Ingress into the EKS cluster hosting our web app with Nginx Ingress Controller. This deployment is part of our hybrid architecture series. I highly encourage you to check it out. The intro article is linked in the video description, and it's a good jumping off point for the rest of the series. In each of the subsequent articles, we dive into the use case and include step-by-step -step instructions for deploying your own services using the code and CI-CD pipeline provided in the associated GitHub repo. Now, we'll be deploying an Edge WAF as well, but the focus of this deployment is API security. We'll be turning on API discovery, API protection roles, and creating our API definition with our Swagger spec. The connected world runs on APIs. Your banking app uses them, your rideshare app uses them, even the weather app you check before walking out the door, it gets that data from an API. We interact with them multiple times throughout our daily life to do everything from the most essential to the most mundane. They're everywhere and more and more are being published every day. Given the sensitive nature of the data that can be exposed by unprotected APIs, the need for effective security cannot be stressed enough. Here in this example solution, we'll be using DevSecOps practices to deploy an AWS Elastic Kubernetes service cluster, running the Arcadia Finance test web application, and serviced by F5 Nginx Ingress Controller. To secure our application and APIs, we will deploy F5 Distributed Cloud's web app and API protection service. This will provide us API discovery and security, as well as a traditional web application firewall and malicious user detection. For this deployment, you're going to need a distributed cloud account and API certificate, an Nginx Ingress Controller license and Java Web Token, an AWS account, as well as Terraform Cloud and GitHub accounts. Now let's get into our demo. To begin, we need to set up our environment. As mentioned, we're using Terraform Cloud. This is so we can share state between our Terraform runs. So we're going to begin here. I pre-created most of our workspaces. We need one for each asset being deployed. We're missing the XC workspace, so I'll create that now. Here we choose CLI workflow, since we'll be using GitHub runners to run our Terraform. Once we have it created, we need to go into the settings to ensure that we share state with all other workspaces. Now we need to set up our variables. At the root of your organization, select Settings, then Variable Sets. As you can see, I've pre-created most of these as well, but we still need our Nginx JOT token. While the specific variable may not be sensitive, I'm still going to mark it as such out of habit and an abundance of caution. Also note that I have shared the variable set with all workspaces. Now all of these variables and values are provided both in the article series and in the GitHub README. I've just pre-created these to save time. Now let's go ahead and get started on our GitHub configuration. We link to the repo in the article and also include instructions for what's required. The first thing we need to do is create a fork of the repo. I've already got one ready with some pre-created secrets to save time. We need to have a secret for each Terraform Cloud workspace we created. We're still missing our distributed cloud workspace, so I'll add that now. Just like with our Terraform Cloud variable set, everything needed to set this up is provided in the article series in GitHub README. Now that we've finished setting up our environment, we can go ahead and begin our deployment. To begin our deployment, the first thing we need to do is clone our repo to our local workstation. I'll open up the repo in VS Code just to make things easier to see. Next, 
we check out our deployment branch. This needs to be named deploy-xcapi-nic. This can be changed in the GitHub Actions workflow config if required. Now that we're in our deploy branch, we need to copy over and set our local TF bars. This needs to be done for infra and XC. Now, in the infra TF bars, you'll add your deployment prefix and your resource owner. The deployment prefix will be used throughout all resources as a way to identify what's been created. You can also make any changes to what region and availability zones you want your assets in. Next, in the XC TF bars, you'll need to provide your XC tenant URL, the namespace for your deployment, and any additional features you want turned on. In this case, API protection and malicious user detection. You'll also need the fully qualified domain name for your application. Next, we need to comment out the TFR section of our gitignore so that the files will be pushed to GitHub when we deploy. Once all changes have been made, we add and commit our changes and push our deploy branch to GitHub. Back in GitHub, we can see our deployment under Actions. Now we'll monitor our pipeline and see things being created and watch for errors. Some of these resources take quite a while to stand up, so I'm going to use some video magic and speed this up a bit for the sake of timing. We can see that we're now on our infrastructure. This is all of our AWS resources being created, such as our VPC and our subnets. Next, it moves on to our EKS cluster. This usually takes about 15 to 20 minutes, so we have it really sped up here. This is creating our node groups, any IAM roles that are required, adding our EKS add-ons so that we have a fully functioning cluster once it's complete. Next is our ingress controller. This includes any namespaces and secrets required, the Nginx deployment, as well as Prometheus and Grafana for monitoring. For this, we're using the Helm provider along with the Nginx Plus Helm charts. Next is our application. We're using the Kubernetes Terraform provider to deploy the Arcadia Finance web app and API, as well as all required services and ingress resources to our EKS cluster. Last but not least, we move on to our distributed cloud resources. This is deploying our load balancer, pool, WAF policy, and our API security resources. And just like that, we're finished. We can head back to the summary and view our completed workflow. Now let's head to our distributed cloud tenant and take a look at what we've built. Once we log in, we navigate to the web app and API protection tile. Here we can see our load balancer that was created. We can take a deeper look at our configuration by clicking the three dots and choosing Manage Configuration. First, let's look at our WAF policy. Here we can see our default WAF policy in blocking mode. Now let's look at our API protection configuration. Here we have our API definition that was created using our Swagger spec. Next, we can view our configured protection rules. Finally, we can see that we have Discovery enabled. Now by default, Discovery only learns API endpoints and patterns from traffic with response codes of 200. You can see here that we've enabled learning our response codes of 300 as well. Now let's look at our common security controls. Here you can see we have malicious user detection enabled. And in our policy-based challenges, you can see that we have JavaScript and CAPTCHA challenges set to default. Let's take a look at our security dashboards. I've already generated some traffic, so we should have some data available. Here you can see we have quite a bit of bot traffic. We can see that there's 677 security events generated by my attack traffic, as well as a few other malicious actors out there. Now let's take a look at our API endpoints. In this dashboard, you can see APIs that were inventoried from our open API spec file, as well as any discovered or shadow APIs if there were any. Now the difference here is inventoried APIs are the ones we have definitions for, and shadow APIs would be discovered APIs that were not in the definition. Finally, let's check our web app. And here we can see the Arcadia Finance web app online and ready to accommodate all of our financial needs. I hope you've enjoyed this quick demo. 
Workloads are increasingly deployed across multiple diverse environments and application architectures. Organizations need the ability to protect their essential applications regardless of deployment or architecture circumstances. Equally important is the need to deploy these protections with the same flexibility and speed as the apps they protect. With the F5 WAF portfolio, coupled with DevSecOps principles, organizations can deploy and maintain industry-leading security without sacrificing the time to value of their applications. Thanks for tuning in and have a nice day.